All right, last but not least, we have our Ubuntu server setup. We're going to go over to our Ubuntu server that we created here. Double click into it to launch it. This one has already been kind of paired up with its ISO. So we can go ahead and let that kick off. If you get a prompt like this, on any of your VMs, go ahead and install that. It's, it's a tool called VMware um, VMware Tools. It just makes the operating system and your hypervisor uh, interact with each other a little more efficiently. So it's nothing nothing to be concerned about. It's just an efficiency thing. It, it helps the two systems work together better. So go ahead and install that. It'll make things go a little bit smoother if you see that pop up. All right, that's out of the way. My server is off to the races. Don't be concerned on any unless you see a a, del, a really long delay. You might see some failed things. The load process for Linux is a lot different than Windows. They actually allow you to see a lot of the stuff that that in a Windows system goes on behind the scene, like different files being checked, different things being loaded. So you'll see a lot of text running across your screen during during a Linux boot up. Just let it run. Don't don't bother it. Let it do its thing. All right. Now we got a prompt. I got a blinker cursor. They want some interaction. So this would look familiar uh, or similar to what we've seen on our windows machines is, is asked me what language i want to operate in uh this is this here is all text based so i can't use my uh my mouse here everything's keyboard so just click into your virtual machine and then once you see that keyboard movement going or you know i'm using my arrows right now select the language that you prefer and hit enter All right, so I had to scroll down a little bit to see the next option. Um, it's asking me, do I want to update the installer? I'm going to continue without updating the installer. So I'll hit enter again, and then I'll hit enter one more time to say that I'm done with my keyboard setup. I know my screen is a little wonky right now. You can't see the whole thing at once. So I'll scroll up. Everything's set to English, English for the keyboard, just like what we saw in Windows. Um, but everything, but here, everything's text-based. So I'm going to hit hit done, click back into my virtual machine and hit done. I'm going to continue without networking for now. I can set that up later. And then in this option here is asking me if I want to set up a proxy server. I'm going to I'm going to ignore that and I'm just going to hit done. I'm just going to keep that default settings. A lot of the stuff we just because we're not customizing it right now. We're just going to keep the default settings. You can always go back later on and change some of these settings. Um, this uh, mirror is for downloading additional updates for uh, Ubuntu. We'll keep that set to its default URL. Now it's asking about encryption. We're going to keep the entire uh, keep the option use entire disk set. For our setup for our hard drive, so I'm just going to go down to done on that. This is how the drive is going to be partitioned. So if I take a closer look at it, it's laying out my file system. This is a summary of how the file system is going to be laid out. That that in Linux that slash is actually a directory called the root directory. So just like you have folders inside of Windows, you have these directories, so just another name for folders, in Linux, and they all start with this one directory called root, and it's represented by this forward slash. So the root directory is being given 18, almost 19 gigs of space. Then inside, then inside of that root directory, there's another directory called boot. That's where our boot files are stored. That's give, been given a, 
been given a gig of space, one gigabyte, and then the rest of that 20 gigs that was set aside for the hard drive are allocated in a way that is outlined in this table below. So that's the basic setup. We will accept that and we'll just hit done. <clears throat> Selecting continue will begin the installation process. So we're going to go ahead and say continue and let it go off to the races. Uh, after oh, a couple more pieces of information, we need a username. So my username, I'll put click in here and give it There we go. Give it a username. Give my server a name. I'm going to call you Ubuntu. You can name the server whatever you want. As a matter of fact, if you want to give it the same uh, sort of name that uh, you gave it on the outside in the VM, that's fine too. So W Sanders. And this was Ubuntu. It only wants lowercase for the name, so make sure you do that. We'll give you a, the error that I just saw. Ubuntu um, server. That's fine. And then let me go back up to my name. Let me get my full name. And then let's go down. I'll give it my username and my password so this is setting up that admin account once all that's done you can go to the bottom of my screen and hit done you can choose to install open ssh server we're going to go ahead and bypass that. We don't need that right now. Done. These are some other server roles. So in on a server, remember that servers provide services um, for uh, other users and devices systems. So there are a, your, when you set up a server, it's going to have a bunch of potential roles that it can fulfill on your network. Um, <clears throat> this, this here is giving us a chance to, you know, allocate some of those roles. We're going to skip that for now. We're just going to take the defaults, and this looks like the full setup of everything. And now our actual installation is kicking off. You see that little spinning cursor right there. Uh, it's showing installing the kernel. Remember, the kernel is the core part of your operating system. So we're actually in the installation process right now. We'll let that run. I'm actually going to pause the video at this point because it shouldn't require any more user input. And once that finishes, we'll show. We'll look at what the um, what our next steps are. All right, so that took a little bit a little bit of time, but now um, that's because I allowed it to install the updates. Um, you can skip that part if you want, and then you can do the updates after the operating system is on. I just let it let it do it um, out the gate. Um, so all the updates are installed. I'm on the latest and greatest version of Ubuntu Server now, um, and it's prompting me to do a reboot. So I'm gonna go ahead and reboot the system. Again, Linux boot process looks significantly different than Windows, so you're going to see a bunch of stuff flashing across my screen for a while. Those green OK is always a good, good sign now. All right, so now it's prompting me for my login. It sees my server name. <coughs> Excuse me. Needs my username first. No.
There we go. Actually, if I was a little bit more patient, it would have picked it up automatically. So disregard that last piece. <laughs> Let this finish doing its setup. I'll pause for a second. All right, so now I can actually enter in my username. Don't be, um, for the username, you'll see that show up on the screen, but for the password, don't be concerned if you don't see anything show up. Typically on Linux systems, they either star out your password or they hide it all together when you're entering a password. So you might see my cursor not move, um, but it's still typing the password in. All right, so accepted my password. And now I am in the server. I noticed that this server launched without a GUI. That's, again, that's typically how uh, a Linux server is going to be set up. And that's just to save on resources. So everything here is done from the command line. So you see, I can issue, um, <clears throat> I can issue commands here. But first, I have to log in as root or use the sudo command. So ask me for my password. And you can see that I'm getting command output now. All right, so now that server is set up and ready to rock.